It's the leading cause of kidney failure in children. It's on the rise. Our health specialist, Leah Sarich, is here now to talk about nephrotic syndrome. Yes, nephrotic syndrome. I do this story every year because I like to raise awareness about this one. It's relatively common among the rarer diseases, if that makes any, yep. any sense. So we've got 25 kids diagnosed every year in Calgary with nephrotic syndrome. And the numbers are on the rise, as you mentioned. And the doctors don't huh. know why. They don't know why it's on the rise. So this is concerning, obviously. Um, so this is where the kidneys are basically not functioning properly. And what they're doing is they're leaking um, protein into the urine. And we actually need that protein to help blood clots form, mm -hmm. to help us ward off infection. So what happens is, is that these kids then become very swollen. So they become swollen sort of all over. And it's really too bad because um, they get all of this fluid into their tissues. You can imagine how uncomfortable yeah. that is for these little guys. And eventually this disease can cause permanent damage to the kidneys. So it's really, it's really, really sad. And what we do know is that the immune system is basically attacking the kidneys. Mm -hmm. So any sort of treatment options are really going to suppress the entire immune system, which is really tricky. So I spoke with Dr. Wade over at the Children's Hospital, and he basically explains those treatment options. Usually it's steroids, and there's going to be a proportion of children that don't respond. And those children go on to a class of medications that we use in transplantation. And uh, they have to stay on those medications for years. Because uh, when they come off the medication, they will relapse. Um, for the children that do respond, we keep our fingers crossed and hope that they don't get it back. Uh, in certain cases, about two-thirds of the cases, they will, it will return. And so uh, we will use steroids again um, in those children. But occasionally, if they, if they get it back, um, frequently enough, or if they become resistant to the steroids, um, we have to use second line drugs. And those second line drugs are pretty powerful. We're mm -hmm. talking drugs for, used for transplantation, for cancer treatment, that kind of thing. So, of course, these drugs come with really serious side effects. Wow. This is where the problems lie. So, we've got these kids, their, their immune system is suppressed, so, of course, they're prone to infection. And you can imagine how scary that mm -hmm. is in the cold and flu season. Um, they have an uncontrolled appetite, so this leads uh. to weight gain. And it also leads to irritability. And this is so tricky when it comes oh, to these little yeah. kids because you can't really explain to them why they're so grumpy all the time. Mm -hmm. It has to do with their medication. So, this is really tricky. So, of course, the first symptoms of the disease that are, is that swelling. And, you know, it's often mistaken as an allergic reaction because it starts often around the eyes. Right. So these, these kids will wake up in the morning, the parents will notice the swelling around the eyes, oh, well, they've got an allergic reaction. But then it sort of drains away through the course of the day, its gravity takes effect, but then it comes back the next morning. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the telltale signs. Now, I spoke with Andrea and her daughter, Riley, who's six, she has the disease. And that's exactly what happened to Riley. It was this thing where she woke up early one morning and she had this swelling around her eyes. And her mom thought, gosh, this looks like an allergic reaction. But it turns out, in fact, it was not. So this is, it's quite sad. Now, the thing is with Riley, though, is she has the most common form of this disease, which is minimal change disease. And that's it's, it's bad, but it's good in the sense that there's a very good chance she will grow out of it. All right. So this is good. Um, but you can imagine how hard it would be to send her, school, her daughter to school every day when her immune system is depressed yeah, during yeah, cold and flu season. That's the hardest part is just, you know, trying to, to stay calm and stay normal for her because you don't want her to be uptight about everything but also as a parent you every cough every fever every tummy ache you're sort of you have this heightened sense of paranoia of okay on a scale of one to ten what's your tummy pain because is this just a tummy ache or do you you know they are so susceptible to infection in their belly because of the swelling and so you just you're constantly just on heightened alert right Mm. Oh, don't you feel for that mom? And true. in fact, Riley wasn't able to make it to our shoot that day because she ended up with a stomach flu, which mm. they were very concerned about and knew she'd probably relapse. So very, very challenging. But she is doing great. She's in grade one. She's in figure skating and gymnastics. So, you know, there is, good, there is hope at the end of the, of the tunnel for sure. Okay. And you have an event to talk we about? We do have an event. So they have an event on Saturday, which is great. This is one of their biggest fundraisers of the year. It's at the Silver Springs Golf and Country Club, Saturday at 7 p.m. More information on my blog. Okay, breakfasttelevision.ca, health specialist, Lena Sarit. Thank you very You're much. You're very welcome. That.